Hey guys, welcome to That Game Show, the show that talks about all the stuff in the nerd world and of all the stuff in between. I am your host, Chase Bunker, alongside the half-Asian sensation, Curtis Coe. How's it going, guys? And he's player three this week. It's Daniel Clegg. <laughs> I've been upgraded. You've been upgraded. Yes! Murph is doing stuff with important people other than us. So let's get things started. A few good things happened. We had PlayStation Experience and also our Game of the Year episode. We'll talk about that later. Um, I'm still trying to overcome my fangirlness because I interviewed my favorite band's guitarist, and I'm still just like, but, It was awesome. Check it out on YouTube. Yes. Did you the, put that on the same feed as you do this show? Yes, I do. On uh, YouTube.com slash that new show, you should check it out. I don't have the audio up for it yet because, I mean, I don't think it... Cap blah, 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 logistics. Um, <laughs> PlayStation Experience happened the other day where we talked... They announced a whole bunch of new games. The, they had the... PS4 and ex PC exclusive in Street Fighter V. They announced Yakuza 5. Showed off a whole bunch of trailers for No Man's Sky, which looks amazing. That mm -hmm. one. Uh, Uncharted that one. 4, which I... Oh my gosh, I was so excited for. Um, they announced that Killing Floor 2 is going to be on PlayStation 4 as well, which made me happy. Cause that's I'm glad that that's exciting. Expanding. Yeah, that's that'll be a first for them, right? Killing Floor didn't come to consoles, the original one. No, didn't? it's still... I think it's only PC exclusive. Wow, the original wow that's, so that's a big deal. Them. Yeah, good indeed. Tripwire. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I was, I was happy, but I was a little bit confused on was Bastion's coming out for a PS4. It's like, Bastion's been out for, like, a few good years, and you're now bringing it over? Like, that's kind of uh, interesting. And, of course, God of War 4 came out. So, gentlemen, what stood out in your mind? No Man's for... Sky. That's the big one, for me at least, right? Space exploration, just all the videos... The tech looks fantastic. The art direction is, is great. And I love when the de developers say something like, we don't even know what you're going to find when you go to this planet because it's all generating automatically based on who's going where. We don't know what you're going to find, but it's going to be cool. And I like that. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome. I, I just want to say I think that's, that's a way to take kind of the Minecraft tech and kind of expand it to a whole new level, and I think that's going to be amazing. What's right. on your mind, Curtis? What? What stood out in your mind for PlayStation? Well, experience? I'm going to go on the Debbie Downer side here uh, <laughs> to be mean. Uh, I think it was a really odd move that they did the Final Fantasy VII. Now, what, um, tell me again, like, for those that missed yeah. it, tell me the Final Fantasy VII thing. So, a long time ago, I believe it was when PS4 first came out, yeah. uh, they first announced it, they showed this really beautiful cinematic trailer for, um, I think it's the opening sequence, I'm not quite sure, uh, for Final Fantasy VII. And, it, you know, a lot of people got really excited about it, and they're like, oh my gosh, they're going to make Final Fantasy VII with new graphics, so on and so forth. And then, I... Um, at the PlayStation Experience event, they started playing the Final Fantasy VII music, and there were, everyone was getting super excited. Um, they showed Final Fantasy VII, and everyone got even more excited. And then it transitioned to the PS1 graphics, and then you could just hear the whole audience just kind of go, uh, uh, uh. Meaning it's a re-release, not a It's re a re-release, and it's not a not HD remake or anything. And I understand why they, you know, it's not an HD remake or anything like that, but I just think that's a really really strange and kind of mean thing to do to yeah. their fans because they know they want it and so why would you kind of dangle that in front of them i mean it it's it seems odd to me it seems very like they didn't really think that through all that much i mean it's already out on steam you can get it for like 10 12 bucks i mean why do we really need it on the ps4 right i'm gonna I'm, i'll play devil's advocate here in that one this whole conversation is contrary to what we were saying before when we were criticizing these big companies for re-releasing even a remastered game we thought is it really worth the money you yeah. know when you're playing a same game yeah. you played 10 years ago and we came around to um it's for nostalgia and it's for a new generation of players right yeah. So in this case, there are tons of people. There's a huge market who don't play games on computers. They don't have – a computer is not where they play games. They play on mobile and maybe on a console. So in their mind, I think this is an untapped market. Well, I mean, big. on the completely other side of the market, though, how many of those players, if they're brand new players, are going to play a game that is graphically – I mean, I'm going to be mean here, but ugly. It's an ugly game. It's a PS1 game. How many of those people are really going to be interested in playing an old PS1 game? Not to mention the fact that it's also... I have uh, Final Fantasy VII on my PS3 right now. 
Like, it, mm-hmm. you can get it online, like, on the PlayStation market. So it's not yeah. like they just announced it, but it was just the fact that, I don't know, it, it's still, like, the biggest tease that, like, for years they've kind of teased this game. It's like, it's one of the best Final Fantasies out there. And then you tease it with these incredible graphics, like, all right, cool, we might get a remake of it. And it's like, it's the one remake, like, you'll remake 10, but you won't touch 7, which that kind yeah. of baffles me. Yeah, and that and that's another point. We Well, I mean, and the other part, and I understand why they're not remaking it, don't get me wrong. It's I mean, think about all the changes they'd have to make to make that game updated to these days' standards. I'm just saying, I, I'm normally for remakes, I just think it's weird. It's just so odd that you would say, hey, look, let's re-release this game and then you make a big deal about it. I mean, if you're like, oh, we're bringing this to, you know, to PS4, you know, it's going to be the old PS1 version. Everyone would be like, oh, okay. You put it in yeah. an event, though? That's, Nintendo Nintendo does that's that a hot. lot. Where yeah. they will uh, port over you know, uh, one of their old Super Nintendo games to the Wii yeah. or the Wii U. And it's in, the, in there in the marketplace. And you can just purchase it. It's like for five or six bucks, you know. And it's nice, you know, for people who like that sort of thing. But... You're right, they don't make it part of their press release. Or if they do, it's for a handheld. So, like, they moved a bunch of 64 games onto the handheld, and that was a big deal, and I think that's right. interesting. Right. Um, also, I, I, I oh. think Bastion is less weird than... I, I yeah, I agree. Seven, right? I think it's, it's a great a game. game. I think it's a yeah, great I mean, game, too. I love it's Bastion. it's a great game. And it's a good-looking game, too, so... Yeah. yeah. And I love the soundtrack as well. That's one I'd always recommend. One of the games I was also I was a bit skeptical, but I think after reading into it, I'm a lot more excited about it. Is God of War four because it's now tapping into Norse mythology, or supposedly it's going to tap into Norse mythology, which it confused me at first because have you you guys have played three right? I have never played a God of War game. Okay. Neither have I. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I know the general story. I know it has to do with Greek mythology, and it's this guy killing a bunch of gods. Yeah. That's basically what I know. Right. It, but it's like the way 3 ended, I'm trying to say it without spoiling it, but like the way 3 ended, it's just like, how? How can you, how can you like make a game after the way 3 ended? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Like plot wise, it doesn't make sense. Plot wise, I, I'm a, like, it's like it's I'm almost like I'll have to take the Hamlet two approach, if you know mm-hmm. what I mean. I got it. okay, okay. I got it. <laughs> uh, or, that's, it's yeah. like everyone's dead. Yeah, it's, it's like you know, what, what's yeah, next? Yeah. A res- they, oh, like uh, Reservoir Dogs two. It's like how <laughs> the whole thing takes place in hell. Exactly. <laughs> That would actually be pretty cool. I would play that well, game. Well, they did. He technically did go to hell at one point. Anyways, anyways, but it's it's interesting because they're talking about that. Um, some people are speculating that you could see a massive fight between Kratos and Thor. Ooh, ooh and that, would so, be cool. that sounds cool. Uh, well, we should back up here because you, you. I mean, you were saying earlier that it might take place with Norse gods. Is that yeah? Is that what you were saying earlier, yeah. So that's. That's awesome. It would that's, be. That's fantastic, in fact. So, like, before, like when I first saw it, like, oh, God of War 4, it's like, what? No, is Sony really that desperate for money? It's like, then, then they added the storyline. It's like, okay, I can kind of get behind this. So think how, think how cool that would be if they did, like, Egyptian gods or, like, you know, some other, like, strange pantheon of gods. It would be even better if Smite added Kratos to the lineup. <laughs> Oh, man, we haven't played that game in a long time. I know. That one was no, we might have to do. Like we might have to do a let's play on that one. We might have to. Jeez. Reenact our first episode of Chase and Friends play. Oh, you mean that one with the bees? No, not the bees. <laughs> oh man! If you haven't checked that episode, check out our YouTube channel. That new show. We actually have other fun <laughs> stuff as well. All right. That was a quick ass topic. Um, I think that was actually the first time I swore too. Uh, let's go to game time. We are going to play a game called Closest to the Pen, where I will give you guys a topic, and you have to guess what date, blah, blah, blah. We'll get more into that stuff later. Uh, today's edition is called the Game of the Year edition. I'm going to give you a game, and you are going to tell me what year it won. Now, mind you, this is from like the bigger publishers. So it's not going to be like one of those little tiny blogs. So, okay. who wants to go first? Well, okay, are, are we doing whoever's closest, and we're both guessing? Yes. So, okay. we're going to do, do it to where one person has the headset off, and blah, 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 like the, like the original episode. Well, okay. Why, why don't we just alternate? Uh, Curtis will go first. 
and then I'll go first for the next one, and then he'll go for the next yeah, one. Yeah, that's then. fine. I think that'll work fine because, well, to be honest, thing. no, he doesn't. Well, like it. I mean, the the thing is, Chase, we can get it. first of all, uh, we may influence each other's decisions, but I'm pretty sure we're both going to be off. So we're we might end up wrong on this. We, so both, we both might end up being like worse because. <laughs> all right, it's fine. Don't okay. worry. All Don't right, worry. it'll I'm be not, fine. I can ruin the set. Yeah. We're not going to do it anyway. All right, ready. Go. We're going to start off with Clegg on this one. Uncharted okay. 2. Um, okay. Um, so we're on 4. I didn't play these games because I They're never amazing. had a PlayStation. I, I hear they are amazing. So 4 is coming out next year. I'm going to say 3 to 4 years lead time. So 8 years, 8 to 10 years back. So I'm going to say 05. Okay. Curtis. I'm going to say 09. 09. All right, Unreal I've... Tournament, the original Unreal Tournament. Uh, Jet, uh, Mr. Go. We're gonna say the original Unreal Tournament. Mm -hmm. So let's see. The first one I remember playing was in Oath. Hmm. I'm not gonna say that aloud because I might give a hint to my opponent. Oh come on! <laughs> Don't three and oh four. We know that. Uh, okay, yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna say 2000. I will say. 99. Okay. Metroid Prime, Clegg. Oh, I played this one. This was a Nintendo one. I like this a lot. This was back when I had a GameCube. Yes, that's correct. Did it come up with GameCube? So, um, weren't there three of these? Yes. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the first, first one. one. Okay. Uh, I would have been like 12 at the most. So we're going to say 2002? Two, Jet. I'm gonna say four. Goldeneye 007 on the N64. No, not the Jet. Ninety-eight. Damn, I think you're right on that. I think you're right on ninety-eight. I'm gonna say ninety-seven, but I think you're right. I, I don't know and why finally, that popped into my head, but it was no, like... that, sound, that sounds <laughs> right to me like... as well. Uh, I'm gonna finish off with Clay Super Mario Galaxy. Maybe it's just your confidence. Maybe. Um, <laughs> Galaxy. I had a friend who played Galaxy. He lived down the street from me, and he lived there more than 10 years ago. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm loving like, his like, logistics on everything. That's how we He's work like... through these things, because I don't know when the release date was. I was but playing this Madden. When we played this. Well, which year? <laughs> um, I'm going to say... 2001. Jet. Okay, so let me let me go through my logistics here too, because I need to think about this for a second. What Madden Super game were you playing at this time? Super Mario Sunshine was the only GameCube Super Mario. Correct. So it would have been on the Wii. Correct. Oh shit! You're right. I was thinking of Sunshine. Oh no, uh, that's the... yeah. Okay. The, okay, so. I owned a Wii in at the earliest at 05, and I believe it was one of the release titles. I'm probably wrong on that. So I'm going to say... You are. What? I, I don't think you're wrong. I think you're right. I think 05. I'm going to go with 05. Yeah, I, I, I know you're closer than me on that one. I was thinking of Sunshine with the water gun. Galaxy. Yeah. With, with Galaxy. The Galaxy. Yeah. And the you know yeah. <laughs> well that's okay that's okay all right I... so if do you guys remember the scoring for last time uh... point for the winner two points if you're right on the dot oh okay. okay all right do you want me to, do you want me to write down Chase, I, or I've, you... I already got it taken care of I'll put oh, it okay the... okay I, I was slightly prepared today he's on top of this man hey, I mean, he's just wrecking this yeah I know um, all right first game uncharted 2 came out for the PlayStation 3 Clegg it's 2005. Jet, 2009. The winner on the dot is Jet. Woo! Really? Yes. Came out uh, one in 2009. Two years. You were you were thinking too many. I think it's two years in between. Them. Yeah. All right. Unreal Tournament. Two thousand. Uh, Unreal Tournament. The original one. Clay, 1999. Jet, 2000. One of you is right on the dot. And what sucks is you were off by one year. As if like you went prices right style, except it failed you. Clay got it. 
No. Oh, it was man. Nine. Nice. I have to give up my tr the Unreal Tournament trophy. Oh, oh my. We, we played 2004 <laughs> like nothing else. Yeah, but we, I gotta, think, we have I to do a, played the original. That's one that we have to play again sometime yeah. for a Let's Play. Mm, I would love before. that. We all have it now. It's on Steam, right? Yeah. 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 I, have, I always I have it. it installed just in case of like a time will I install it. I, I okay. will reinstall it, and I know Clegg has it because I bought it for him. Yes. Yeah, I have it as well. Yep. yep. <laughs> all right. Metroid Prime came out for the Nintendo GameCube, Clegg 2002, Jet 2004. Once again, one of you is on the dot, in which I actually wow. can say out of there was one game you guys did not get on the dot. Yeah, really? Wow. 2002, <laughs> Clegg with the points. Very nice. All right. Oh, crap. If it's Nintendo, I stand a better chance because that's the only <laughs> console. Except for, except for except Galaxy. For yeah, Galaxy. Yeah, okay. yeah, not that one. Spoiler <laughs> alert. I never actually played Galaxy. <laughs> Did a lot of Sunshine. Yeah. Was uh, was sunshine so was weird. good. I heard they're uh, they're gonna be releasing that one for possibly the 2DS, 3DS. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, that'll be yeah, interesting. Good. All right, Goldeneye 007 came out for the Nintendo 64. Clegg with 1997, Jet with 1998. One of you's on the dot. One of you's just a year off. Oh God, was my Clegg 97. Damn it! <laughs> yeah. And oh, man, Super Mario Galaxy came out for the Nintendo Wii, not the GameCube. Right. I was thinking of that other Mario game. Yep. <laughs> Clegg, 2001. Jet, 2005. The game the year one was 2007. Uh, Curtis gets the point. However, Clegg wins the game 6-3. Yeah. to three. Wow. Good job, dude. And with dominance. You player nailed Player 3 is so much better than Player 4. <laughs> Usually, player three is the player that gets stuck with uh, the pink color. Yeah, with the broken controller. Yeah, exactly. That's not true. You always had a good controller when we played GameCube. Right, but as a general statement, you know, you always it's gave. Not, play. not mine. Yeah, my player three controller was busted. Controller. Yeah, yeah. as I know, I played yep. on it. So. Yep. I actually preferred that controller. That was a good controller. Well, it's funny. It's like I was actually playing Sunshine with like a broken controller, and I didn't even think about it for like. I play like half the game with broken controller, and I'm like, why am I running faster if I p move the camera to the side and I press right instead of pushing forward? And so why does this game sucks so much. I, it was literally like I was like, <laughs> I was. I think I remember crazy. that because you were trying to jump somewhere and you could never make it. Yeah, and so I, right? if I shifted the camera to the side, I was like, oh, I could do this, and it worked. And so it's just awkward as heck for the camera, but other than that, I did it. <laughs> that was a good game. Right. I enjoyed that game. So, moving on to the Game of the Year topics. They, of course, had the Game Awards, which I didn't watch because... I did. How was it? It was pretty good. It was, it was not great, but it was pretty good. G4 I mean, it's, ruined Game Show Awards for me. Uh, well, I mean, it was okay. I think it's better than the Spike TV Awards, but, yeah. you know. It was, you know, it was a good award show, but I don't enjoy award shows all that much. Yeah. So. Who won the Game of the Year on that one? Inquisition did. Inquisition? Good for them. <laughs> all right. So it's warranted from what I hear. Yeah. Well, we'll argue that a little we bit. We'll argue so. that. We <laughs> each gave out or wrote down two games that we thought were going to be Game of the Year. And I, of course, I have Murph's down as well, even though he's not here to defend yeah. his games. Um, let's start off with Curtis. What were the two games that you wrote down? So I wrote down Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, do you want me to describe what my game is and like kind of defend it? Or yeah, want... like um, yeah, let's talk about that game for a little bit. Okay, so Dragon Age Inquisition is the second game. I'm just kidding. It's the third game in the Dragon Age series. <laughs> we don't, just, we don't <laughs> count two. Pretend it doesn't exist. Um, well, I have to admit, it exists because it has story implications in three. Um, mm. So it's the third game in the in the Dragon Age series, and if you're anything like me, you didn't. Well, you saw that they did some good things in Dragon Age 2, but for the most part, you didn't really care for Dragon Age 2 all that much for, you know, a couple different reasons that we'll go into another time. Um, Dragon Age 3 re truly reads as, in my opinion, an apology letter from Bioware for Mass Effect 3 and Dragon Age 2. Oh, wow! So, in all honesty, it really nails those things that we wanted from those games. The ending... For Inquisition is fantastic, in my opinion. It sets up a lot of things later down the line, and it 
And the implications are all there. It's not just one of those things that comes out of the middle of nowhere. If you're paying attention, you're going to have some inkling of an idea of what's going on. And the story makes sense. The characters are great for the most part. One of the characters I thought was horrible ended up being probably the most interesting character in the game, mm. which is kind of surprising. And there's a lot of those little twists and turns. The story does well. The one complaint I will have is there's some serious technical bugs still and that, uh, that it can get a little grindy. But not so. on the same level as some of the other games we've been hearing about, like uh, Unity. Right or, or yeah oh uh, well sometimes yes so I mean sometimes it's just as bad because there's game crashes there's my voice of my character changed about a third through the game which has been yeah. patched now but at the time I was really angry yeah, so true. we'll 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 get into that a little bit more when we're defending and going back and forth against it but um you know that my personal pick will probably end up being Inquisition even though I'm going to mention a bunch of things that are raw is generally wrong with the game the pros of it overshadow any technical issues yeah in my opinion yes some other people will feel differently um it, it also depends on what kind of rig you're running on i've heard the ps4 version runs really really well without much trouble but some of like the xbox uh xbox 360 and playstation 3 and pc if you have a lower end pc might not work as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all right so, so. it's just one of the games i'll go over to clay now what was another one of the games that you nominated for game of the year um, I put in Hearthstone, and I, I wish to pre- preface this by saying that we're not going with any particular category, yeah. right? We're just sort of lumping them all into one, and uh, that's not exactly a fair comparison because we're com- in this case we're comparing an RPG to a card game. Totally different. A children's card game. We're just gonna, yes, like Yu-Gi-Oh, but we're going to we're going to compare them anyway because you know why not? This is funsies. Exactly. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, and I'm not sure how you wouldn't, but Hearthstone is Blizzard's uh, collectible card game in the World of Warcraft universe. So you, it's like Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh! or the Pokemon card game, anything like that. Um, it has just exploded onto the esports scene. It's one of the biggest things out there right now. It's larger than StarCraft II. It's almost as large as League of Legends. Um, they got 20 million players. I mean, it is, it is just absolutely huge. And what I like the most about it is just the amount of polish that they put into this game is fantastic. They, they've really made it accessible to new players while retaining a lot of depth. It's not as technically complex as a game like Magic. You know, there are simpler mm-hmm. rules, but that doesn't mean it's an easy game and doesn't mean there isn't a complex system it's not complicated but it is complex right so it, it's accessible to new players and veterans they're going to have fun in it too really good game um one of the games murph put down i think you guys can both actually like just help describe me what makes it so yep. great is dark souls 2 Love um it. i have like, i wanna... haven't played it i'll let you two guys you, know, you want to start like or you want me to uh, you Dark to... Souls is a crazy, difficult, super challenging uh, role-playing game, right? In the veins of, I suppose, it's kind of uh, Elder Scrolls-ish, kind I of. I don't think that's a fair comparison. I well, think well, that... What other game would you compare it to? It's hard to put I it would, in another category. I would say, and this is going to be me just being kind of weird, is it reminds me a lot of a 3D version of the old school Ghost and Ghouls. Like, it's just super freaking hard to the point of... Like, if you F up really bad, you're going to die almost instantly, and you're going to have to start from, you know, it's a more forgiving version of that game, for those of you that are familiar with it. I, I guess, right? It's, uh, so it's a role-playing game, and the the bosses and enemies you're fighting are all super challenging, really difficult to play against. But the game is fair in that they do a particular set of moves, kind of like a Nintendo boss almost, where if you learn their tells you can counter them. It's just, you got to pay attention and you got to be good with your reflexes, you know? So if you enjoy a challenging game and you like the fantasy setting, that's your game. And I think it's also worth pointing out that I think Dark Souls 2 in some ways is more accessible than Dark Souls 1 was yes, to definitely. new player. Um, I feel like they did make it... I hate to use the word easier because easier is not the word I would use when when talking about any of the Dark Souls games or the Demon Souls games. No. But I think there are some things in it that 
are more accessible because it has some elements that you know are a lot more understandable. The menus are a little more forgiving, easier to navigate. You're not yes. spending so much time, so much grindy time, just figuring out mechanically how the game works. You know, you yes. just yes. sort of understand it from the beginning a little better, which I suppose makes it more accessible. It also just makes it less annoying to play. Yeah, than one. So, but it also I, makes I'm okay it. with that. It makes it considerably easier. So some of the people who you know really crave that crazy challenge are going to. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I I still think that there's some challenging moments in the game. Yeah, I, I think it is generally accepted that um, it's not as good as one, but it's yeah. still a really good game. And since one didn't come out this year, it can't be a contender. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Dark Souls Two, really good game if you're into crazy hard. Yes. All right. All right. Um. My first nominee was Wolf Among Us, and some people can like say, "Well, one episode came out last year." It's like, yeah, but the, the rest of the series mm-hmm. came out this year. Uh, for those who've never played it, it's from Telltale Games. The people have done the Sam and Max series, who did the just released Tales from the Borderlands and Game of Thrones, and of course, The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. You play mm-hmm. as the big bad wolf, who are, are now in. Um, not I want to say modern day New York, but they're in I like it, a modern I think it is. Yeah, I think it's like the nineties. Right? Yeah, I think it's the nineties. I think they said what ninety one maybe, but I could be wrong. Yeah, about that. Um, I think that sounds right. It's an interactive story, similar to almost similar to like Heavy Rain and Indigo Prophecy, where you play as the Big Bad Wolf, who is the sheriff of Fable Town, and there is a been a murder, and you have to figure out who did it, and you have you interact with all these people. I thought I came into it uh, about three episodes in, and like, because I remember, Curse, you were telling me about it. Um, yep. Our friend Josh was telling us about it as well. Like, they kept saying, like, this is a really good game. You need to try this. It's like, all right, cool. And I think I literally booted it up and I played the first episode and I said, I need to know what happens now. <laughs> yeah. And so I booted, <laughs> so I finished one through three, and then I was really pissed off because now I have to wait. And I hate waiting. <laughs> and I get this text in the middle of the night. Why? <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> and and games like that really highlight how important um, story can be in games. Yes. Not not all games take advantage of that, right? Yeah. It's, it's like mm-hmm. a street uh, Street Fighter game is not about the story at all. Yeah. But for those whose basis is on really strong storytelling and really good writing, that mm-hmm. game. And I would say like, probably yeah, next to well. Borderlands too. Like this was probably like some of the best writing. Like now, the, of course, the ending like left it on a cliffhanger, and so I'm just like, yeah, yeah. and I just that wanted to was... punch something. But other than that, like story wise, it was a game that grabbed me and never let me go. Mm-hmm. It was a mm-hmm. game that had me anticipating release dates and then having my steam up at midnight just so I could attempt to play this game. Ready to Except go. for it Ready wouldn't go. come out until it 2 o'clock the next day. Dicks. And they didn't do it. <laughs> I know. I used to stay. Up, I used to stay up with Chase on the nights where four and five, I think, came up, and we were like waiting until midnight, and then it wouldn't come out, and we'd be like, ah! <laughs> and of course, like it was one of those games. Where, like every game experience is different, and like, that yeah. was one of the cool things about it. Is like, so I'm immediately texting Curtis, "What did you get? What did you do? Did you do this? Did you do that?" And I thought that was what, probably one of the best mechanics that they could have put in a game like this. And it's like even some of the mechanics that were involved with episode one came back into episode five. So every decision was important. And I thought that's what they did Players a really so. good job yeah. of. And yeah. So, yeah. So that is one of my nominations for well, game. Can I, I'm going to jump, jump in on that. I like that we um, have a game that I would put in, in the more casual category. It's not a competitive game like Hearthstone. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. not a hardcore game like an RPG or, you know, like a, either Dragon Age or... Or, or Dark Souls. Souls. Yeah. Yep. Right? That's a more casual game that is built on story, not on action. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that it is that good, it's, in, in our minds, game of the year quality, speaks to the casual game market. Yeah. Right? That's great. Well, and let's, let's go even further. I don't think you need to be a completely skilled video gamer to play and do well in Wolf Among Us. No, no that's the problem. Um, yeah. And it's and it's it's pretty forgiving too, from what I remember. Yeah. If you f up, you know they have like quick time sequences that are quite intense. But if you f one up, you know 
because you don't really understand what you're doing, it it let it still tells a story. It goes along with it for the most right. part. You, you don't need to have good reflexes. You need to have moral balls of steel because some of the decisions that you have yeah. to make in games yep. like that are yeah. hard. Well, I've it, got moral balls bad. of steel. And yeah. the worst part is, is sometimes you'll make a decision, you'll think it's the morally correct decision, and later on, it'll bite you in the rear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in a way, that's like, you get sort of a high when you kill a really difficult boss yeah. in Dark Souls, right? Like you feel, oh, I'm so good. Well, that took three hours to figure out, but I nailed it. Yeah. And three when you hours? Do it, when oh, you yeah. Do... No, t- Seath the yeah. Scaleless in Dark Souls 1. He spent yeah. probably 12 hours trying to beat that boss, and he finally oh, figured it out. And then there's a similar thing when you make these gut-wrenching decisions in these story-driven games. You feel, sometimes, horrible about oh. these made-up pixel characters, let but me you tell, don't attach to them, right? Let yeah. me tell you about Inquisition. There are eight of those decisions in the game, and I literally almost reloaded my game after making every single one of those decisions. Mm. It was to the point where you're like, I don't know if I just made the right decision, because there is no right decision. Right. And it's, so, I mean, I, I love the fact that Wolf Among Us got nominated because it's a great game. Yes. And I think it's very mm-hmm. um, good writing. We'll go back to Murph. His second decision was Destiny. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm sorry. Murph isn't here to defend this game. Yeah. I, I'm really surprised that he even put it down because he says, like, it's bad, but he keeps coming back to it. Yeah, I... I I haven't played it, but the general consensus seems to be that it's a really well-crafted, visually impressive game. There are some really good systems in place to make it good, but it doesn't necessarily have the depth that a a game that's supposed to have 10-year legs, like they've said it, they want it to, should have. Yeah, wow. And I mean, they've already kind of stated that they're working on de- possibly working on Destiny Two, on Destiny also, two. Well, which doesn't like make any sense with what they were going. Well, they with. also just they, released a new raid. At, they just released a new raid, and apparently, like yeah. that instance is really apparently it's a lot of fun. So I'm glad yeah. that they're improving. But I think it, Destiny proved to us what Borderlands would be without the humor and without the yeah. good writing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's. Uh, I think we were talking about that before, yeah. but that's that's what it looked like to me. It was like so it's Destiny without with uh, Borderlands without the humor. And the answer there is uh, good, but not great. Yeah. Well, and also and with a worse loot system, from what I've heard yeah. too. So. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Murph. Yeah. You're not here to defend your game. So uh, yeah, he's, he's not going he to listen today. to this anyways. So uh, don't worry. That's fine. He won't even worry about it. All right. Um, Jet, game number two for you. Yeah, so I went with a bit of an odd choice. Um, so, uh, I went with, this is especially funny because I I was one of the people that bashed uh, Diablo 3. I picked uh, Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Um, the reason why I picked Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls is I feel like it fixed just about every problem I had with Diablo 3. Mm. Um, the big problem I had with Diablo 3 is you had to do this difficulty thing where you had to beat the game repeatedly. Until to get into harder and harder difficulties. And I thought that was stupid, frankly. Because I was started my second playthrough and I was like, I really just do not want to play this story through eight times until I get to the hardest difficulty. That's dumb. It's because and, it's the story and it's the yeah. same plot every time. Right? And you know what they did? They just they were like, Okay, well, first of all, we're gonna kill Auction House, which is what everybody wanted in the first place. Uh, and then we're going to basically give you just randomized dungeons that you can just run forever and ever and ever and just get better and better loot. And that's all anybody really wanted. That's what we want from those kind of games. And right. every once in a while, I'll still log in, even though my monk has full-blown gear, and just mess around in there. And, and f- the, the story missions are still there if you want to yeah. play through them again. But it's kind of like StarCraft in that... You go maybe for the story, but you stay for the multiplayer because that's yeah. repeatable and different, and you're not doing the same dialogue with the same characters and the same story missions every oh, single time. Oh, the, the that's what they game. did here. They they put in a repeatable system where you will never see exactly the same thing twice, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, especially yeah. for someone like for me going in, because I didn't get Diablo three when I got when they originally came out. I waited years and years later because everybody kept saying it's awful, don't play it, and then I finally played it. 
when they fixed everything. It's like, this is a much enjoyable game. It was so much easier to get into, especially when you come from a game like StarCraft, which is incredibly difficult to get into, and then mm-hmm. you go to Diablo. Especially like, when you're talking cool. about the randomized dungeons, like Diablo 3 is a dungeon crawler. It's like, no dungeon should ever be the same. It's like, especially when you're in the dungeon crawler genre. It's like, if mm-hmm. if you don't randomize it, then you just have one slate, and that gets boring. So you Well, have- I mean, they they were randomized up to a point, right? But they had to have particular sequences that would be mm-hmm. the same because they were story-driven. Or, yeah. Story-based right. missions. Story-based. You would go through the crypt... Uh, in Act 1, and it would be randomized until you got to the part where you met Decker Kane, and that was always mm-hmm. the same sequence because there was a boss you had to fight and there was an order to what that looked like because they wanted to set up the scene. So the area before it might have been random, but you were still on your way to meet Decker Kane, so between the point where you got the quest to go meet Decker Kane and when meeting Decker Kane, that was random, but the mm-hmm. parts before and after were not random, right? And, and they you also knew what you were doing because you were on the same quest. And they also uh, fixed the loot system, which was a big problem going into it, where there was barbarian gear with intelligence and stuff like that, and people just were... Why would yeah. I make, Why would I ever... Why Why would you give like the weapon exist. smarter than them? Well... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, there were just parts where you're, like, kind of scratching your head, like, why do I need this item? Yeah. Or it'd be, like, the item, exact item you want, but it would have intelligence on it, and it would be monk only. And I think they decided that, you know... Well, in, in Diablo 3, legendary items kind of had to be within certain rules and have some boundaries and have some restrictions mm-hmm. because originally there was some PvP slated for this game. And then they kind of said, you know what? Let's give everyone a lot more legendaries because that's all they really want anyway and make them really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. And that just exploded the scene and, and made the game yeah. so much better yeah. because the whole reason you play, really, once you get your first legendary, I need all my slots to be legendary. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. That's what I want. That's what I need, and that's what I'm going to play to get. If it's a blue or pur- uh, there's no purple. If it's blue, I don't want it. I want a legendary. So mm-hmm. they made that doable. Yeah, exactly. So what's better. yellow? What's yellow? Rare? Is that's yellow the thing rare? too, right? It's blue and then yellow and then legendary. Right. Anyway, yeah. yeah. anyways, all right. I think green, green's above that. All of yeah, them. we don't want. That. All right, oh, play. Yeah, is. yeah. Your uh, Sorry. your second game. Oh, um, yes. Um, Shadow of Mordor, which is a little less popular than the rest of these games. Um, this is a Middle Earth uh, spinoff where you play a ranger of Gondor, similar to what Aragorn was in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So you're crawling through Mordor, you're killing off orcs, um, you're teaming up with the uh, ghost of an elf spirit, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's all about background lore. You know, it, it takes place between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. And it has this really, really, really cool system called the Nemesis system, where you're going after these named orc characters who are generated per playthrough. So when I played this game, I had Kill Rock Gut Eye, um, who has particular attributes. Um, and Curtis's. Uh, Curtis might have a similar orc who's named differently, but he holds the same position uh, in the horde of orcs, um, but he has different attributes as well. So as you play against these guys, you're leveling up, and so are they sometimes. Mm-hmm. And they will gain attributes, and like if you throw a guy into a fire, he might then from that point on become scared of fire, should he survive the fight, right? Um, so they sort of evolve as you fight them, and they level up, which makes it a really interesting, really unique playthrough per person right so right. i'll tackle the game totally differently than curtis might or from someone else and so just another point on your on your um, nemesis system sometimes you'll kill them and then they'll come back so uh i had a guy who i killed with fire one time i killed with an arrow another time and then that the time next time I met him, he had a bag over his face, and he had a metal eye patch where I shot him in the face. Right. So, so it's reacted. To so it's reacting to to what you're doing in a in a fashion where like the next time if they come back to life, they have they will be like scarred, mm-hmm. and they'll have so, dialogue like you yeah. you threw me into the fire, and left me to die. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. do that same to you. <laughs> and they have that dialogue. So to the actions you took, which is fantastic. Like the VO and the motion capture in that game, really, really mm-hmm. good. Combat the was really good, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that uh, uh, gameplay-wise, it was very much Assassin's Creed. Batman. Uh, 
and meets the Arkham games, right? For yeah. Combat and for stealth. Really solid. There are a lot of complaints about the story uh, mm -hmm. of the game, but honestly, when you're playing a game in between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings and you're not allowed to mess with the lore of either of those, you can't do too much, right? That's yeah, true. but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't excuse... Never mind. We're, we'll get to that on another. I like the story of that. We'll, we'll get to that when we we were when we're not defending titles. All right. And and in my opinion, the Nemesis system was so enjoyable. I need to see that in my next open Batman. world RPG like that. I need next to see Batman that. It, it, well, it won't be the next Batman game because they're already you know almost done with that thing. Yeah. It's going to come out early next year, Which, right? By the way, that was that PlayStation experience. We should have mentioned that, but hey, they released oh. a new trailer. Arkham Knight gonna be awesome i think everyone already knows that yeah but i think the nemesis system needs to be in more content and if it's not i feel like i will miss it and and it, it would detract from my gameplay because it's 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 just a really really good system yeah all right um last one for me i had i had a bit of a difficult time finding another one because I thought some of them were okay, but I didn't think that they were Game of the Year worthy. Like, I thought about South Park Stick of Truth, but, like, I realized, like, I haven't even played that yet. Like, I'm going off of, like, I everybody else's either. reactions. Like, I've seen the combat, yeah. and it's, like, it's, okay, it's Paper Mario Combat with really good writing, and it's a mm -hmm. good licensing game. So I like it. I would put it's it funny. on the honorable mention side. Would you, yeah. would you consider it a Game of the Year, Clegg, since you have played it? Um, Against no. these... Okay. No, no, not against some of these other ones we've named. Definitely not. But I think Honorable Mention yeah. is a good category. Um, it's a really solid South Park game if you're into the South Park uh, mm -hmm. universe. Yeah. You know, they make a shit ton of references to the episodes, to, to going back seasons worth. Yeah. Throughout that mm -hmm. game, it's really solid. You feel like you're playing an episode. They do a really good job of making you fe making you feel like you are in that world because they they just nailed the visual presentation of character and movement and the voices and just everything and i think that's really what good. they did really well because i've seen i've seen numerous playthroughs of it and it's the writing's incredible and i of course i like the combat because i'm a fan of paper mario and it's the similar combat mm -hmm. but i mm -hmm. think the game that i'm gonna choose and you, you guys are gonna hate me for it because i feel like it's a fun game that's very underrated was sherlock holmes crimes and punishment like I thought yeah, it was a very fun. I know it's a game that you guys haven't played, and I feel like the gaming I hipster heard this here. One. It is. It's from Frogware Games. They've done all the Sherlock Holmes series. They have the, which apparently is a huge license that no nobody's even tried to take away from Frogwares. Uh, you pretty much you play as Sherlock Holmes, and you go and you solve mysteries. However, this isn't just one giant mystery. It's a sequence of other mysteries, and so you get to walk around. You get to have what is called. Um, a Sherlock sense. So it's like you have to actually like you will see like Sherlock will actually see something if you go into this view. You'll see something you guys will miss. And so like he'll see a footprint. So it's like the um the Arkham uh mm -hmm. kind of like, like, right? yeah, like that, but it's like yeah, it's kind of like that, but like you will see a footprint and be like, "Okay, size 10 and a half has a gimped foot." Um blah blah blah, 6 foot oh, 2. So it's like they, it, they start okay. rattling off stats and I thought that was really cool. And all the puzzles I felt like were challenging but not incredibly difficult but they also provided a sense of accomplishment mm. um the story and dialogue just, just just good enough so that you felt like a like a decent Sherlock Holmes and not a total idiot yeah well because in, in, <laughs> not a, not a Watson. Yeah. in the testament of Sherlock Holmes like it they there's like one or two puzzles where you're like how the heck am I supposed to know that <laughs> and but in this one, mm -hmm. they have they do a fair sense of like you finding all the clues and like you when you solve all these puzzles, like they require a good amount of brain work, but they're all possible. Whereas some of them are just they feel like they're impossible in previous games. I thought that this game was you know dialogue wise, I thought that was really good. It was weird like at first it was weird dealing with a Sherlock that was not Benedict Cumberbatch or Robert Downey Jr. Or, I was about oh, to ask yeah. which, which one of those two is voicing this Sherlock. Neither. Neither, Neither of them. Right? And I, I, I get kind of disappointed, but it's, like, I, it's, it's set in Victorian days. Uh, but okay. the oh, way you set up the clues, and so the way you set up the clues, you have this giant board. And with, the, of course, they do it in the shape of like a brain cell. So I thought that was kind of, you know, kind of unique and everything. <laughs> and they said... Um, and some of them have multiple options, and multiple options lead to different outcomes. And so each mm. case has different outcomes on who you, who gets charged with what crime, which usually is murder. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool. 
And it's a game that I feel gets very little love. The controls can get a little bit wonky sometimes. But I feel like, as a whole, the game's really enjoyable. And I think like, that was one of those games where it wasn't like it didn't have the death grip on me that Wolf Among Us did. But I was always really interested to see like how each case was going to play out or which case was what. Hmm. So I think uh, as my little audible game, I'm going to make it Sherlock Holmes. But it's not going to really. I'm not going to put much of a fight on that one as comparison to Wolf Among Us. Okay. It's hard to make the comparison when we haven't heard of it yet, too. Yeah, yeah that's also I, I mean, I... Is it on Steam? Yes, it is on Steam right now. And what's, which, the, by the way, what's the MSRP right now? MS, what's it, it running should for? Be, it should be around 40 I think, but there will be a Steam sale coming up on 18th according okay. to IGN. So right, Christmas, Christmas sale. Yep. yep, yep, yep. That'll be exciting. So send me your Christmas games that you want. All right. <laughs> so now we go through the eternal debate. Which game is going to get that game show's seal well, uh, how about, for game of the year? Let, let's let's review let's the list. Ax, let's ask some. How about how about in my opinion, although Diablo three Reaper of Souls was good, can we agree that it maybe was not the best game this year? Correct. I can ask that. Um, that. I would ask Destiny before I ask Diablo. Well, Destiny's, Destiny's already Destiny's asked. Already we've asked. already we've okay. already Destiny moved. Sherlock. Uh, I've already been axed, so let me write that down. I would say Stick of Truth probably is out as well. Yeah, that's an honorable mention anyways. Right, and I think I'm going to... I mean, I don't know if we want to add this as a as a, as a a qualifier, but that one seems like it has a much smaller possible audience just because of the content. Uh, I, From what you told me, it's also kind of light on content, too. But the stick of truth? Yeah. I mean, it'll last you 20 hours. It's, you know, it's okay. Really so that's about how much Shadow of Mordor. Yeah. yeah, ish. Right. I mean, yeah, I think and we're, you explore everything like you did. In I think I think we're going on our personal. We're not going on any type of grading scale or anything like that. We're going on personal opinion at this point, yeah, right? Okay. Well, I I wouldn't put it on the same tier as, as some of, of the others. Yeah, I suppose. Okay. So, okay. Jet, you're gonna ask. Diablo three. Um, yeah, I th- I don't think it belongs on the top list. All right, so let, let's review opinion. what we have left. We have Inquisition. We yeah. have Hearthstone, Hearthstone, Stone, Shadows of Mortar, Wolf Among Us, and Dark Souls two. Yes. Uh, those are among all real those, good. Among those, I think we need to narrow it down to three. I would say. I would axe Shadows of Mordor. Oh, actually, uh, I mean, uh, hey, here's a here's a question for you, Clay. Do you think Shadows of Mordor is actually better than Hearthstone? I would argue that Hearthstone is a better game than Shadow of Mordor. Yes, I would argue it's a better game because one, it has infinite playability. Uh, uh, two, if we're gonna use qualifiers like that, well, then, I mean, two, it's yes. just it's. I mean, but on the other hand, Shadow of Mordor had a story. It had excellent combat. My only issue is I didn't have the same type of experience as you did. You got killed a lot in the beginning. I almost got killed not at all in the beginning. That's a fancy way of Kurt, saying Kurt, Kurt, you started way sucking better. in the no, beginning. No, 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 no that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it actually hurt. It actually hurt my experience because I wasn't as excited about the nemesis system. I, 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 I had a nemesis in that game. Who kept yeah, you did. Over again. And, and that's really excited about and that's, that's that's. Huge. Yeah. And I think that's why I didn't enjoy the game as much as you did. And I wish I can I just didn't come across the captains as much as you did. There was one that was hounding you, but they kind of left me alone for the beginning of the game. Yeah. Which is why I would say, in my opinion, it's I'm not as attached to that game as you are. Because you had a better experience with it. I'm not saying I'm a better player than you are. I'm just saying that literally somebody was hunting you and they were kind of leaving me alone. Well, actually, right. Let's put this in perspective. Is Shadow of Mordor better than Dark Souls Two? Yeah, those no. are, that's a better comparison because it, there yeah, are more. Yeah, I think that is. Game. I think Dark Souls Two is a better game. I I just like that game way better than I think I felt way better about the ending of Dark Souls Two than I did when I finished Shadows of Mordor. When I finished Shadows of Mordor, I was kind of like, eh, I'm going on with my life now. When Dark Souls Two, I was like, I wonder what happens if I play this game and it's harder. 
again, mm. and it's harder. Right. You know what I mean? There's yeah. still that, like, I don't think I will ever probably pick up Shadows of Mordor again. I'm not convinced I will ever pick it up unless there's some, like, DLC that adds story content, which it doesn't I mean, I, I feel the same way about both games. I wouldn't pick up either without more DLC, which they, they've both done at this point. But, yeah, I think I gotta have to pick between the two. I think I would have to go with Dark Souls 2, simply because they can do more with that game. Yeah. Mordor has more restrictions on it because of the story. They have more more available to them with uh, Dark Souls 2, which means they can have more varied locations, bosses, all of these different things. Um, and I think the, I'll say, old school RPG system that thing uses is a little more interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think some of the later end Shadows of Mordor parks make the game almost stupid easy. Very easy. Yes, you're right. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. You've convinced me that it, be, it starts off decently difficult and it becomes and it easier just, and easier because you get these insta death or insta kill yeah that you never get in and we were too. yeah and we were playing on a harder setting too at least i was playing on a harder setting and it just suddenly was like stupid easy all of a sudden yeah too. your orcs became water you were you just yeah wading through you're right dark souls 2 is better all right good dragon age or dark souls 2 which one's better oh this one i have been tormenting myself all week over uh, I'm luckily, I think position, so I can't. Mm. So, Dark Souls Two, I think, is a more technically sound game. In all honesty, I think Dark Souls Two is a more technically sound. Now, as far as bugs go, right? That's as far as about. bugs go, and I, um, Dark Souls Two, I don't think is as memorable as Dragon Age Inquisition. In fact, I'm having some trouble remembering the bosses of Dark Souls Two just off the top of my head. And some, like, just off the top of my head, I'm thinking of the chariot and then maybe, like, the dragon slayer guy. And then, you know, I don't remember a lot of those bosses. I don't remember a lot of the things. I do remember the areas. I do remember what my character looked like. I do remember the combat. But my problem with Dragon Age Inquisition is that there are so many bugs. And not only is there so many bugs, but it seems like they they didn't finish the game. Like, some things are just not in the world. Like, there's collectibles, like in most games, that mm -hmm. you can go around and collect. Well, they didn't finish some of that. And so there's areas where you literally can't collect all of them. Even though it says you should be able to? Yes. Oh, and that's, that's annoying. That's annoying as all heck. I mean, it's not to the point of breaking, but it's pretty close where you're like, why don't you just finish the game? Like, mm -hmm. I understand the Christmas rush. I get it, okay? But is it better than... Or just change it so it's like... Change it so it's less. So people aren't asking, where are these other two pieces? Where are these other two pieces? And you're not answering. Right. So yeah, that's something... In there. Yeah, I see what so you're Dark Souls, you would put over Dragon Age. Well, that's the problem, though. I like Dragon Age better. I am, in fact, going to probably play an entire another 120 hours in Dragon Age mm -hmm. just out of curiosity of what happens if I change it. So, okay, I think if... I haven't played Inquisition, but I'm, I'm going to help you out here, I think. If you were making the comparison between Inquisition and Dark Souls 1, you might be more inclined to say Dark Souls 1... Yes. But exactly. two, I, I'm having the same problem you are, actually. I remember the bosses in Dark Souls 1, one. They way were better than 2. They Dark Souls 2. Yeah, Can and, and that's because they are more memorable. Everyone like, seems to be saying that as well. Ornstein and Smo. Better decided. I remember, you know, Ornstein and Smo, Sith the Scaleless. Uh, the the uh, Wolf the in the Graveyard. Yes, yeah, uh, Sivir, the Wolf, so on and so forth. I can name almost all those bosses, but mm -hmm. I can barely remember the Dark Souls 2 boss. I know there was a dragon, but I don't know who it was. You know, I don't think it's as memorable a game as the first one, and that's <laughs> my issue. And I think, honestly, Dragon Age, I think it's because it was a surprise to me that it was so good. You know, I, and that's one of those things where I, I, I think Dragon Age is going to stick with me longer, and I'm already ready to play another 120 hours just to see what's going on. With right, it. And, and you just weren't with Dragon Age. I just right. it. I, I literally just it. I think we have to go with Curtis's Dragon uh, Age. Because you and I haven't played it, and that's Dragon Age, right? Yep. I'm going to say Dragon Age just because of the fact that if Dark Souls 2 isn't as good as 1, 
that, I think that's kind of like a big key. It's like then at that point we're kind of diluting our game of the year not. But even though there is a whole bunch of technical glitches, you hit a good point that Dragon Age is just so much memorable than Dark Souls 2. And I think that's what it really comes down to is like your player experience yeah. as whoever now, you chose to be as in Dragon Age rather than Dark yeah. Souls. And I struggled with it because there's some really big glitches in the game. Yeah. And some issues. But at the end of the day, after beating it, I mean, I can't not give the nod to Dragon right. Age. Right. Now we have our three between Wolf Among Us, Dragon Age, oh. and Hearthstone. All completely okay. different games. All completely right. different games. It is totally you know? unfair comparison. It is. is but well, I don't think it's unfair comparisons it's because not. I think there are three very unique games that have three very different things to give. Exactly. Which is why it's an unfair comparison because they're targeting different people and they have no gameplay similarities almost. And they're just they're, – they're apples, oranges, and a car. They're totally different. Well, <laughs> that is the best comparison ever. Apples, oranges. <laughs> Which is in a car. Man, two of those are really similar. The third one just came out of nowhere. Yeah. Okay. Hearthstone. <sighs> I think – with Hearthstone – it's a very fun game. Don't get it me is. wrong. It is a very fun game, and it's a game I always love playing multiplayer, and I'm, a, and I'm a sucker for card games. But I feel like, I mean, they did add Naxxramas, and I thought that was mm -hmm. really cool. They did just have a new expansion with Goblins and Gnomes, which is Which cool. is huge. The meta is just a totally different yes. now. It's ridiculous. I feel like, though, with Hearthstone, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I mean, it's like out of the three. Yeah, this is a hard three. Let's let's this just start with saying that it's three. it's a very hard three because they're so different. I feel mm -hmm. like with Hearthstone, you're going your experience will change slightly, but it's a multiplayer only game. And I feel well, like, what are you gonna do? I'm just gonna play cards. Whereas in Dragon Age Inquisition and in Wolf Among Us your choices are going to vary the outcome. Granted, you could throw in the devil's advocate topic of, I, well, if you play this card, the outcome's going to change differently. Yeah. Yes, but I, it's a completely different sense. I feel I, like I, out I, of the three, I would pick Hearthstone to be my last. I would not because... I think your argument is that you're even though the cards will change your gameplay slightly, you're essentially doing the same thing. You're placing cards on a table, right? In a multiplayer setting, you're you're doing the same thing, in my opinion, in those other two games as well. You're you're fighting some enemy by using the spells you have in Dragon Age, or you're doing story and dialogue options with some detective work. Well, in, if we go that, we one. can also say, well, you're also just shooting zombies or you're also I mean, if we want to go very bare bones with everything well yes. I, I, right. I, I think we're getting off topic on, on that as well I, I understand what chase is saying but i have to i find it difficult because i honestly hold these three games equal to be honest i think they all serve a different purpose i think wolf among us is an excellent way to get into gaming it, it appeals to a comic audience and it, it introduces an entire i, I mean the, the biggest thing that I started reading uh, the comics when I saw an ad for the game. I was like, oh, that looks interesting. I started reading it. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. Josh played the first episode, and the first thing he said to me is, do you have any of those comics? Yeah. And then he started reading it. And then Chase was like, hey, do you know what I think about these comics? Yeah. And, I mean, that's that's crazy. That's, like, unheard of almost, you know? That's like Shadows of Mordor. People would be like, oh, I've never read Lord of the Rings, you know? And then also in the reading Lord of the Rings, it's like when the movies came out. That's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's fun. likewise Hearthstone. I mean, it's an online only card collectible game. That's crazy. Also, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I I don't have a particular. I f I feel like I mean this is nice because we have a we have a quote unquote casual game, a competitive game, and a hardcore game. Yeah. Right. As our three Can contenders. we just? Can we just do a multiplayer game of the year, a single player game of the year, and a start? Well, I mean, we already <laughs> gave us our multiplayer <laughs> game of the year with Hearthstone. Yeah, I, feel, I mean, I feel like Hearthstone is gonna last the test of time better than the other two games because they will continue to add on to it. Eventually, they're gonna do another Dragon Age game. That's a totally different thing. Eventually, they're gonna do another 
They might do Wolf Among Us 2, or they'll do a different story-driven game. That game will come to an end. Hearthstone will too, but it's going to have 10 expansions in it, you know? It's yeah, but you're... 10 years. But, and I mean this in the nicest way I can, Dragon Age will always have a place because people will want to go back and see what happened in those first couple of games. They will want to experience those things for themselves. And likewise with Wolf Among Us, I think Wolf Among Us will be a game that you can play 20 years from now and it'll still work fine. Yeah, I mean, that's true as well, yeah. Like, there's games that you go back and it just doesn't work. Like, Goldeneye, have you tried to play Goldeneye? Yeah, Goldeneye did not age well. It does not age well because we're used to twin stick shooters. Yeah, the- that's the a game aiming, that, aiming in that game is horrible. It is oh awful. yeah, it was it was awful. But like Wolf Among Us, you drag a cursor somewhere. Right. I don't I don't think that's I mean, I, in my opinion, these three are I should hold these three in the same yeah. regard. And I don't I don't even play a lot of Hearthstone, but I recognize its importance. Yeah. Especially when it's on, you know, it's now reached out to the mobile app uh mobile uh Yeah. Mobile, As well. Um, be sure. I'm, Multi-platform. Thank you. It's iPad and iPad, iPhone. iPhone, all these it's other Android? platforms. And Android. It, it's, it's not on, on iPhone yet. It's going to be on Android okay. early next year and iPhone later. Yeah, but it's on the iPads, right? So yeah. It, it is yeah. Cool. So. So. I mean. I don't know, Chase. This is tough. I don't know how you want to handle this, but we have three very different games, three totally different categories. At, at least we nixed the similar ones, right? Yeah, like the we RPG. at least got rid of the similar think, ones. So here's something I think we can do, you know, um... I think we can basically do a one, two, three kind of thing, which games we think should be first place, second place, and third place, and then do it on a point system. You know what I mean? Where you, the first place gets three points, second place gets two points, third place gets one point, and then we and can then kind we of do that per person that. and add them up. Yeah. We could do that. All right. I mean, it's better we can just say these three games are game of the year. Games of the that's year. All, that's like having a tie, and I hate those. It's that's why I don't watch tie. soccer. <laughs> okay, so I like I like Curtis's idea. I think it makes the most yeah, sense. The We're most at a sense. Dead Which, I don't by the think... way, if for those of you listening right now, either on YouTube or on Podcast Garden, you can follow us on Twitter at that underscore game underscore show because that game show is taken. Um, out of those three, which one would you prefer? And if you don't like one, feel free to ask a, or tell us what you think and call us stupid because you know the internet. <laughs> All right. So right now, write write your three down. Okay. Where do you want us to put it? Um. Which no, pretty much what we'll do is we'll say it. So. Okay. And I'll just keep score. Uh, no, wait. Never mind. Copyright. Okay. Yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm, right, done. I'm ready. Third place. What did you give? Wolf Who? Among Us. Uh, Clay. Clay gave uh, Wolf Among Us. So that's oh, hold on, let me write. Wolf. Dragon. Okay, so Clay gave it a one. Jet. I gave Wolf Among Us the third place too. You guys are all dicks. <laughs> well, it, it was it was close, but the end result was that I think Hearthstone. I agree with Clay that Hearthstone is just a little bit more polished, and if it didn't have that cliffhanger ending, I would have been a lot happier with Wolf Among all right. Us. I, all right, my third place was Dragon Age. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Um, the glitches, I think, is what really yeah. Yeah, kind of solidified that's understandable. it. All right, second place. That really is a make or break thing for a lot of people, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's an understandable, you know, reaction as well. Yeah. All right, second place, Clegg. Uh, Dragon Age. Jet. Are we going to end up in a deadlock? I Hearthstone. I gave Hearthstone my second place as well. So I think this might end up as a deadlock. It might be. Uh, let's see. I gave Wolf 3. Uh, I gave it my first place vote. Dragon Age. Uh, let's see. It's mine. Dra- yeah, it was your game of the year. Hearthstone was mine. So was. This is completely uh, let's see. Used. Hearthstone finishes with 7. No. Hearthstone no. won. Hearthstone wins. Yeah, that had two second place. Oh, okay. So Hearthstone is our game of the year. Hearthstone is our game of the year. And I put Dragon Age in third. I should have just moved it to second, just so we could have like this 
Well, actually, never mind. I wouldn't have done anything. <laughs> yeah, would have. Uh, no, it would. Chase doesn't like to lose. No, because it, Dragon Age won. Dragon, Dragon Age would have won. It's just weird yeah. to think a card game, a children's card well, game, would win. I think it's it's ultimately because it's so accessible. Um, I don't, you know, again, I don't love Hearthstone, but I understand why people love it, and I understand why it's going to be around for a long time, and it is. Really, in my opinion, is one of the first games of its kind, with the exception, of course, of Magic the Gathering, who has been releasing their game for quite a while. Yeah, I think, what are they on, 25 years or something? Well, they, they're, they've been, this is their third or fourth, like, video game video game, so they actually have... Right, they've tried to do game. the, the uh, computer game thing before, it's similar to Hearthstone, but it's never been as polished, it's never been as accessible, it's never been well, as yeah, it's never It's never been a Blizzard game. In my opinion, yeah. that's the big issue. Sure. Is or yeah. it's a Blizzard game, unless that it's less because I've played it and it's fun. It's not that hard to understand yeah. Magic. I mean, it can be, but I'm talking like from a UI and systems perspective. It's exact. It's like identical. It is, is it now. I think, like I think they identical. re-released it recently so that it was updated. I think when they're... Magic. No, Magic. Yeah. Magic came out in 13, and it looked almost identical. To what Hearthstone yeah. looks like. All right, mm. so Hearthstone's our game of the year, and Chase Woo! is so happy about it. Yay! I think it's a, I think it's fair. All right, I think it was. So good game. that is it. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at that underscore game underscore show, and feel free to tell us what you think your uh, your game of the year should be. Should it be Hearthstone? Should it be Wolf Among Us? It should be Wolf Among Us. <laughs> Um, also, should it have been something we didn't mention, like Super Smash, or you know? Uh, oh yeah, I thought about Super Smash, but I haven't played it, and so I played I it either. Or Mario Kart was another one I thought yeah, of, but I don't know. really good, both really good. So, feel free to subscribe and leave a like to our YouTube channel, That New Show. Also, follow me on Twitter at Chase Bunker, and take a look at some of our other videos that we've done, like our previous episode of Risk of Rain, or me interviewing Rick Jacket, because that was so awesome. Uh, anyways, for Chase was squealing. What's that? Jace was squealing. Oh my, I was fangirling like there was no tomorrow. Like, it, <laughs> like outside, I was, you know, you know, cool composure. Inside, oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyways, that you could take that as in any context that <laughs> you want. So, trying to think of anything else I need to plug. And... I don't think so. Nope. All right. So, for Daniel Clegg and Curtis Coe, I am Chase Bunker. We will talk to you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Vote for Wolf Among Us. Just, just vote for Wolf Among Us. <laughs>